Happy Monday, everyone, and welcome back to shop. We're going to work on Chapter 7, Layers and Layer Effects. We are going to discuss the difference between background layers and regular layers. We're going to look at blending modes, opacity, and fills to blend pixel images. And we're going to learn how to lock layers, which I think we've already done, but we're going to go over that again. We're going to link layers and move them as one and put them in groups for organization. We're going to look at layer effects. We're going to align and distribute layers. And then finally, we're going to work with layer masking again, which we've already done. But we're also going to add clipping masks to hide portions of an image. So let's begin by opening our um, Photoshop 2020 book files, then into the textbook files, and then in Chapter 7. And we're going to start with the file named Kids and Kittens, which is a... So if we look at our layers panel, we have a background layer and then we have three layers. Now I'm actually seeing a white background here and I'm expecting to see these as transparent. So I wonder if I never changed my workstation back when we did our color wheels a while ago. So if you have the same issue going on, let's go up and check the preferences. Um, Command K is the shortcut whether you're on a Mac or a PC. Um, on a PC it's under the name Photoshop. On a Mac, or I'm sorry, <laughs> on a Mac it's under the name of the software. On a PC you go under File Preferences. From here we're going to go to Transparency and Gamut. And we want to turn on our medium grid again. We want to be able to see this checkerboard in the background. We had changed it to none when we were working on our color wheels uh, last week when we made the colors mix together. So I simply didn't reset this. I did notice that after I reset that, my file didn't update over here. So I just quickly closed it. And then I reopened the file Kids and Kittens. And now I can see that these are very much on transparent backgrounds. So um, we can see through to the background image behind. Um, if we turn off the visibility of our background layer, we can see that we have three separate cutouts. And their stacking order does matter as well. Because if we were to move them around, um, we could pile them up on top of each other. And the stacking order would matter. All right, the background layer is different from regular layers because it has no transparency. Um, so your background layer is always going to show up with the word background and the lock on it, meaning that you cannot change it right away. So moving and rearranging layers, we're going to work on that first. Um, if we select the background layer and try to move it, with a marquee tool, we really can't do that. So let's be on our background layer and create a marquee and then switch to our move tool and see that when we do move out of there, we have a big problem, right? We're actually cutting it out and what's showing behind is the background image, or not image, color. Whatever we have our background set to, I happen to be tan and brown, you're probably black and white or white and black. But when we cut that out, we actually leave a hole and we see through to our background color. I'm going to undo that real quickly and undo that. All right. <clears throat> if we try to move our background layer, if we just take our move tool and we start to try to move it around, we can't. It says we cannot because it's locked and that's locked by default. If we unlock it, Notice that it did turn into a regular layer. It turned into layer zero. It's no longer called background and it's no longer locked. So if you need to move your background layer for any reason, you will have to unlock it. All right. Um, we tried moving. Uh, the marquee tool, let's do that again. Let's take a marquee and on our background layer, let's select a small portion of this and try to move it again. So with the move tool, we're going to move it to a different location. Now that this is a regular layer, 
when we cut out and move away from it, we actually see transparency. There's nothing behind it, not our color fill like before. With this selection still active, let's try to transform. Command T. And we can transform that. I'm doing it in a way that is um, proportioned. If I hold the shift key, it becomes, um, I can scale it disproportionately. All right, I'm going to undo twice, or I'm just going to say no up here to this maneuver and undo again. All right, let's select the mic layer and make sure that nothing else is selected on the screen. Um, we don't need to have the marching ants around him. I did that, that by command clicking to preload that, but we don't need to do that. So I can deselect command D and we're going to look at the different blending modes. So with mic selected, we're going to go right above that in the layers panel and we see normal is the default blend mode, but then we have some others and you do get a slight preview. So dissolve, you can see how it's dissolving around the edges. Uh, the next family is darken. So we have darken, multiply, color burn, linear burn, and darker color. The next family is brightening. So we have lighten, screen, color dodge, linear dodge, and lighter color. Then we have a soft, or I'm sorry, an overlay, then soft light, hard light, vivid light, linear, pin, hard. We have difference, exclusion, subtract, divide. We have a hue option, saturation, color, and luminosity. So you can see that by putting a different blending mode here, we can really change the look of this. Um, we'll go back to normal. The other thing that we can do to a layer um, to the right of the dropdown for normal is our opacity. If you hover over the word opacity, you get the scrubber where you can pull left and right to change the opacity. Notice he's fading into the background. So those are two different things. You can use the scrubber. You could use the down arrow and pull this slider. You could type in an actual number like that. Um, I'll bring that back up to 100. <clears throat> or you can select a number, actually type in a number between one and, or I'm sorry, zero and nine, um, and that's a percentage. So zero is 100%, five is 50%. If you hit tab, ah, that no longer works, huh? Guess not, which kind of makes sense. I'll go back to 50. Guess that's something that Photoshop has changed since the book was published. So I think typically we just change it with a slider because it's a visual thing more than an exact number. Bump it back up to 100%. Um, the fill right below it is almost identical to opacity. Um, the results are going to be identical unless you're using layer effects. So the difference is opacity will affect both the layer contents and its effect. So if we had a drop shadow on Mike and we change the opacity, both would change to 50%. He would and the drop shadow. Um, the fill part is only going to affect the layer contents. So we could fade him out to 50% but have a 100% drop shadow effect if we wanted to. So they are pretty similar, but this one will affect both. This one will just affect the contents. Uh, another thing we can learn in this window is we can lock layers. So the background layer itself is really only locked when it comes to trying to move it or transform it. Those are the two things that you can't do when it's locked. So we've already unlocked ours, turned it into a regular layer. So as regular layers, we have options with each one of these. And again, Mike is the one that is selected right now. I'm just going to click away here. Wish opacity would not light up anymore. There we go. I'm going to pick Kevin. So to the right of the word lock, we have some icons. The first one would lock any transparent pixels on this layer. The next one would lock um, the image pixels themselves. The next one locks the positioning. You can't change that. The next one um, is going to prevent auto nesting into, come back, 
and out of artboards and frames. This is a new thing because Photoshop now supports multiple artboards. And the last one is just the lock, which is going to lock all of those features. So let's go back to our mic layer. And with it selected, let's click on the lock transparent pixels icon. We're going to turn that on. We notice the lock comes up right here. Let's take our brush tool. I'm just going to grab a red color so it's easy to see. That didn't change at all, did it? All right, and with a red brush, we're going to scribble on the image. Notice I'm scribbling all over the place, but the only thing that is being targeted is Mike himself. I have locked down all the transparent pixels. They cannot get painted on, okay? Undo that. <clears throat> all right, we're going to unselect that one. And then we're going to move on and we're going to select... Oh, we're going to go back to that. I'm sorry. Go back to the eraser. <laughs> go back to the checkerboard. Lock down our transparency. We're going to switch to the eraser tool over here. So we painted and it stuck to Mike. Now we have the eraser. And as we attempt to erase part of him, notice that we're protecting our transparent pixels. And in this case, because this is an active layer, I'm erasing straight down into our background color here, this weird brown color, but I'm not targeting any of the transparent pixels. So the eraser actually paints with the background color. All right, let's undo that and deselect the lock transparent pixels over here and select the lock image pixels. Oops, I need to undo a few more steps to get that cleaned up. Okay. Unlock the first, or unclick, deselect the first one, and click to lock down the second option, which is the image pixels. All right. Um, now we're going to try to paint and erase and see what happens. Let's use the paintbrush. It says no. Let's use the eraser. It says no. We can't paint or erase anything on the layer when the um, lock image pixels are locked. So let's undo that one, deselect that. Um, let's go to the lock position icon, the one with the arrow, and let's try to do some moving. I'm on the mic layer trying to move. It says, nope, can't use it because it's locked. So if you get something set in position and you don't want to just um, turn off or hide that layer, you can always lock the positioning of it using that button right there. Um, another thing that we can do is we can link some layers. So uh, let's say that we want Mike and Kevin and Jenny to move together as one unit. Um, or maybe when you're designing, you want a logo with the name of the company, you have them positioned correctly and you want them to move together. Um, at the bottom of our layers icon, there's this link, and with those three selected, it links them together. So moving one moves all three in tandem. It's kind of like grouping them. You want to unlink them, you click on that same icon. All right.